Welcome back to another Spot On Chat. I am Rebecca Monet with Zorco Profiles. We provide profiling tools for franchisors and franchise consultants, which help facilitate a right fit between a prospective franchisee and a franchise concept. So with me today is Ricky Wilkins. She is a senior franchise developer with Z Sprout and a very intriguing franchise concept called Decalash. So Ricky has lived her life oftentimes going against the grain. She is bold, tenacious, and persuasive. Welcome back, Ricky. My pleasure, thank you. So I'm loving our conversations. Uh, and I'm wondering if I could dig into a couple of your, uh, let's call them passions, hobbies, okay. uh, interests that I discovered in our conversation at, at lunch uh, the a uh, few months back. And you have two distinct ones. You are a antique holic, right? You <laughs> love antiques, but you also have uh, this interest in politics and you are active in various campaigns politically. So talk to me about the antiquing side of you, which by the way is a fascination and a hobby I have too. So, yes. um, so what got you into antiquing? What are some of the craziest acquisitions you've had? Tell us all about your passion of antiquing. Well, I actually started uh, antiquing when I had a position with a company where I traveled 100% of the time. So I would leave home uh, Monday morning and then try to get back home Friday night. And I would end up perhaps on both coasts during the same week. Mm -hmm. And I was calling on uh, self-insured companies, insurance companies. This was a managed care product. But occasionally I would find myself in a city where, you know, I had an appointment on Tuesday and I had an appointment on Thursday. So now what? Yeah. Well, you can <laughs> sit in your room and make calls and do all that. But sooner or later, you've got to get moving. So I would go antiquing because I could kind of walk through this wonderful maze of things oh. that somebody loved at one point, cared for, um, and it was fascinating for me. And I started small because I'm on the road, right? So I would, I, I have a lot of old copper. Huh. And that was one of the things that I've always collected, but now you buy it and how do you get it home? So I would always buy an old suitcase so and I would, smart. Take, I would take it back to the hotel, get the daily paper, wrap it all up, put it in that suitcase and I would check it on the airline. And I mean, some of these suitcases were pretty over the hill. <laughs> I have the most phenomenal collection of old suitcases and I use it in my decorating. Uh, I, I should show you mine. I should move the camera where you can see how I'm using <laughs> old suitcases over here to my right. Um, so you would buy an antique suitcase, fill it with other trinkets and lovelies, and uh, it would be part of your carry-on luggage or yeah, checked in luggage. Check it, it, with the airline and it would get home. So, <laughs> so smart. I would have never thought about that. I'm a crazy antiquer uh, and, and will wander around, even if I don't buy a single thing. It's, it makes you look at history in an interesting way. Oh, how was that used? Or isn't that interesting where that came from, especially when there started to be more uh, international travel and people would get things from other countries and not you just... live in such a great city for well, antique because well, because you have such a diverse population we we've purchased some real finds in your city in san diego mm -hmm. well you got me convinced i got to get out there uh <laughs> more more often but this this uh antiquing first it started to go into suitcases, which then became a collection all by itself. 
But my understanding is you've, you've acquired some bigger pieces. In fact, you and yes. I were talking about two pieces the other day that you're considering. And I'm thinking, how in the world? Well, I learned how to ship. It's really not so tough. <laughs> There's somebody who will come and pick it up and wrap it up and deliver it to your door. <laughs> I bet we even have franchise systems that will do that I, for you. <laughs> good. <laughs> I have a phenomenal wine cabinet from um, a restaurant in Chicago. Uh, the restaurant was La Francaise. I don't know if it's there or not, but it was top of the, wow. you know, and uh, it's phenomenal. I have no idea how old it is, but this is a beautiful it, piece. It's a piece that I love. And we've actually built a place, a part of our house around it. So wow. yeah, it's wonderful. So it's a focal I, point then. It is. It's a focal point. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, we could talk antiquing yes, for a hundred years, but I want to get into the second passion or interest you have, which is politics. So, yeah. um, so again, how did you get involved and what campaigns, if you can even tell us, uh, have you worked on or what was the most interesting story around uh, working on some of these campaigns? I think my interest in politics came when I was a business owner because I really became aware of, you know, tax issues and regulations and mm -hmm. um, just you know, I was living that life. So I started being more interested and got more educated about those issues. And then um, once I sold the businesses, then I went back in the corporate world, wasn't such an interest then. Um, but we moved from San Diego to <laughs> Cincinnati um, in uh, 1999. Mm -hmm. And you know, we found a great house and we, you know, started taking, decorating it and all those things. And then 9-11 uh, happened. Ouch. And we didn't really know a lot of people here at all. And about, I don't know, shortly after that, uh, we got a little postcard in the mail from our political party and they were inviting us to a picnic. And we said, you know what, maybe it would be a good thing to just go spend some time with some like-minded people wow. because of, you know, everything gets political after a while, right? So we did, and they kind of scooped us right up and put me to work. Of course, you're a persuader. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pretty soon I'm involved in raising money for the women's club and, you know, lots of volunteer things. And pretty soon I'm helping local uh, politicians get elected or reelected. And then I kind of moved on into gubernatorial races and then uh, presidential races. Um, and it, it was so much fun. <laughs> so much fun uh, and you know it was a, a rallying of so many like-minded people and uh, I really enjoyed mm -hmm. that. Really you know what I, I liked it you made that point because there's something that happens when we bond over a cause right yeah. over something bigger than ourselves. And, and if, especially if that cause is something where we feel like our talent, your ability to build a team and build consensus and persuade and move people a certain direction where you can put your God-given talents to good use to potentially make things better, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. So, so uh, yeah, there, that, that, that kind of bond is hard. You know, and it's... Uh it's a long-term bond. I mean, politics is never going away. I'm not as involved today as I would have been maybe uh, because I'm busy and we moved, we moved sort of out of the uh, city center and we're in, a, in the country. And I do quite a bit of traveling with Decalash, or I did until- You will again. <laughs> you will again. So I, I'm giving all my efforts to, uh, uh, 
deck of lash at this point, but I'm still talking to the TV every night. <laughs> do this. Yeah, I, I do the same thing. I do the same thing. I, I feel emotions when I watch certain things that I didn't even know I had. So <laughs> how could I be so passionate about something? And it is really important for us to know uh, what's going on uh, in the world. I spent most of my life, you know, like head in the sand. It's like, oh, the big guys that have studied this understand the politics. What does this have to do with me? But to your point, as a business owner, mm -hmm. I realized, wait a second, it all has to do with, with my business, my legacy, my children. Um, you know, we have to get involved. Uh, if, if and when the, the time is appropriate. And it sounds like not only have you gotten involved- I already have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> Are you running for, for some kind no, I've of- been asked, I've been asked, but no, that's, it's really not what I wanna do. I would rather promote you for a position uh -huh. than take the position. Got it. That's more fun for me. That's but so I think someday I'd like to get more involved with the IFA. Because what they do for us, for it's our unbelievable. Industry, oh, thank goodness they're there. IFA, are you listening? Because <laughs> I think you have a volunteer here. <laughs> I, I agree. What they do for us day in and day out, they are uh, they're doing battle for the small business owner, Absolutely. for the franchise model, something you desperately believe in something I desperately uh, believe in. Um, so I think the IFA should tap you on the shoulder because <laughs> I, <laughs> I love hearing your dream and I can, I'm, I'm hundred percent behind you. Well, I can't imagine not doing this, but if you I see? ever find myself not doing this, I'll be doing something else. <laughs> That's right. And you're good at reinventing yourself. So yes, this I is am. <laughs> So far, so good. <laughs> and leveraging everything from the past to become the next thing. So you'll have no problem, that's for sure. So again, Ricky, thank you for this conversation. I love getting to know you. Uh, and I'm going to invite you back for another spot on chat. Okay, I'd love it. Talk to you soon. All righty.